right off. Yeah. Hot, baby, let's go. Oh, baby, we're back like Christ. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I, I think that, uh, yeah, I, there is a fucking Rain Man artist, kind of, or like Rain Man fucking Geo oh, guy. Bro, There's that I've guy seen that flies that over the video. fucking, yeah, he flies over, they'll like helicopter him around like France for like an hour or two, and then he can fucking paint the entire city. Yeah, like, like, draws the yeah he draws so, the entire de- in detail. So he's like this severely autistic dude. He's like this, like at the time I saw it, he was like a black teenage kid, like, and he had like never been to Manhattan before, never seen like the skyline in person. They fly him up for like fucking 15 minutes. This fucker is on the ground and in the pl- helicopter, just drawing like everything to scale. And it's like, how the fuck do you do that? Like, I'm talking like two. I guess like, it's, a, it's a big trade off, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You have to sacrifice so much to get <laughs> such a, a little skill that like you'll a, never get a, pussy. A, but God, you have a photographic memory. And it's yeah. literally a photographic memory in the and that in and that's a world so where wild. everybody can just take a picture and just be like, oh, yeah. Well, well like, have you guys he, seen those? Uh, I was going to say, have you guys ever seen those geoguessers? Like the guys yeah, that are guys really, are really good at geoguessers. They like it's like a website you can go to and play and like it'll drop you some random place on on uh, with like the Google Street View and you have to guess where in the world you are. And these dudes in less than a minute or two will have it narrowed down within 50 to 100 miles. And that's like, yeah, they're like, this is this is Australian trash trash bags. And uh, we're going, <laughs> right. It's like what we're going. We're going southeast on a northeastern highway. Like, like he's like, what the fuck are you even yeah, talking dude, about? Fucking, like, yeah, we're right here. Give that's me, insane. give me, I've never seen titties for 500, Alex. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> that's some of the saddest shit. I mean, that's cool. You that's just actually, have to deal I mean, with like, you just have to deal with like the crippling awkwardness that is your life. Like, just the world needs tards like that. I was going to say, just, say it, Stuart. Sir Isaac <laughs> Newton. Sir Isaac Newton died a virgin, but you know what? Changed the fucking world. So, I mean, yeah, straight up. We yeah, need now those kind of mover shakers. But now if you're an incel, all you do is just go shoot up a fucking school. You know what I mean? Like we we yeah. need to focus these guys towards the arts, the sciences, things like that. Like yeah, Hillary man. Duff is cool. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Hillary Duff is cool. You know what else is cool? Physics. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> they, yeah. You got this that's... guy who's just obs- instead of obsessing about trains in his mom's basement, he's just building AR 15s with a 3D printer. And you're like, fuck, dude. Like 30 years ago, you would have been fine. You would have been in the basement. No, but now the internet's out. This guy get, gets radicalized and he <laughs> don't feel that's guns. his one obsession. Yeah. Don't build Everybody guns. You're weird. Build prosthetic limbs for the kids who get shot by guns. <laughs> yeah. Come on, there has to be some kind of positive. Dude, yeah. that, there's, there's never there's gonna our, be a shortage of there kids it is. need limbs. I mean, pop culture America, rehab prosthetics. Let's go. go. That'd be the shit. That the, who who is marketing that? Prosthetic limbs. We are now, <laughs> dude. They they uh, what's his name? Uh, Pusher T was just in St. Louis uh, in October, and that guy lost a prosthetic leg at uh the show. And afterwards, it's the so guy funny. was like, "Bro, I can't find my prosthetic leg." And uh, Pusha T actually, I should fuck if I'd have known this is gonna come up. Pusha T actually like got on. I think it was either Twitter or Instagram, but he's like, "Bro, can someone help my boy find his prosthetic <laughs> leg?" <laughs> or whatever. But like, it was either his leg or his arm or something. But like, he lost his prosthetic limb here at a Pusha T show somewhere in, in the parking lot of Shafitz. You know how many times like a girl will probably throw a bra on stage at Pusha T and he doesn't even bat an eye, but like the first time you see a prosthetic limb coming at you, dude, that's got to oh, be yeah. a fucking trip. Well, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, that's cool. That's one of those. That's like, something you're going to remember, right? You remember like this... You remember what city you were in? I, it was at the pageant. Uh, prosthetic. Um, prosthetic dude, limb. That's, Hold on. that's too funny, though. Here we go. October 1st. Uh, Pusha T responds to fan who lost. Uh, it's If you. Uh, front office it's in complex if you want to look this I'm up but uh yeah day after push your team performed at the pageant in st louis a fan took to twitter claiming he lost his prosthetic <laughs> during that during the event but generally had a good time i lost my prosthetic leg at your show in st louis still had fun though <laughs> That's what he, said. <laughs> he says the 45 year old rapper caught wind of the post and called fans for help 
We got to find that man. Pusher responded. If you were at the STL show and know where my guy's prosthetic leg is, <laughs> please hand it over. <laughs> and, so like, uh, and, then, and somebody responded, how son get home with no leg? And he responded, <laughs> I hopped. <laughs> oh, dude. Where does so, a prosthetic yeah. leg fall in the pantheon of weirdest shit thrown upon the stage? You know, Ozzy took a head off, of, bit the head off a of bat. Right. Uh, Alice Cooper threw a chicken to the crowd. Well, a chicken was thrown onto the stage. He threw it back, and the crowd decided to tear it to pieces and throw the pieces at Alice Cooper. And then he had like a chicken part fight with the crowd. Steven like, Tyler yeah. would pull 13 year old girls out of the crowd and pull them right back <laughs> stage. You know, cra- yeah. crazy shit like that. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's, pro- that's, probably the wi- that's probably the wildest. Okay. Steven, what would Tyler, a- Steven Tyler getting a, a, a groupie underage girl her, get her parents to sign legal custody over to him so that she can tour with him on the road. That's probably the wildest shit that's ever fucking happened. On or Ted stage, Nugent. Bro. Ted I'm, Nugent fucking <laughs> getting Ted that. Nugent. Ted Nugent what got what, what's Ted Nugent's story? Oh, I mean, what did Ted do? But Ted <laughs> Ted married that little that little 13 year old girl too. Uh he oh, had, shit, I didn't know that. It was a 13, 14 year old girl, and he had the parents legally sign guardianship to Ted so that he could take her out on tour with him. And obviously he was having sex with her the whole fucking time. Bro. Damn. Things were just different back then, I guess. Like I if she would do that. Want. So when somebody calls him Sweaty Teddy, it it's fucking it's, <laughs> or Uncle Ted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my dad, it, my dad it got me into Ted Nugent growing up, and he was always like Sweaty Teddy. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, fuck yeah! Wait, dude, is that Mark solely a reference to that? No, there, no, I'm just saying, like, the, it, but it, it 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 has a new meaning now. Like all I we know, all, yeah, I was gonna say Ted Nugent never did drugs. So there's only other one reason why he's sweaty. Yeah, dude. That's so <laughs> wild. That's the thing. Like all those other people, like Steven Tyler, all those other fuckheads, like they can I mean, there's no excuse, but at least they can be like back in those days, I had no idea what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Like I was so out of it. I was like kind of caught up in the world. Ted, Ted Nugent, Nugent stone sober. Stone sober. It that's like the worst era to be like, yeah, I was the only guy sober through that. You're like, dude, yeah. you there, if there's any skeletons in your closet, you were dead to rights. Dude, he you was probably I mean? banging, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it, it's just a foul dude. Fuck Ted Nugent, and he's a terrible person. Like, and and can we be real here? Like, not, another thing I've kind of realized growing up, Ted Nugent's got it like his four heaters are bangers. Dude, Strangle, but, Stranglehold is probably the fucking badass, most badass opening guitar dude, riff. Of all everything time. else sucks though. Oh, Amboy, yeah. Amboy Dukes is cool. Journey yeah, to the but, center, no, Journey to the center like, of the mind. He's got like four or five like bangers, but like Ray, his, wow, co- his no, cool. Whoa. I feel like his collective work of art is not really that good. It, <laughs> so much of his shit is incredibly mid. It's so bad. Yeah, it's just really not that good. So fuck you, Dude, Ted. I can't. You ain't I can't, my uncle. Well, what's yeah. crazy? <laughs> what's crazy is that he's uh, that he's DeAndre's uncle, right? Who? Who? Sorry, DeAndre Swift. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, damn! I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. No, I gotta Good quit. Let, I gotta quit. I gotta catch. It's your birthday. We can't be letting shit fall flat like that. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's our it's Jack's birthday, everybody. For everybody who doesn't know, Jack just turned 30. If you can't tell by the the wrinkles he's got next to his eyes now. Dude, what if you just what if you just grew a beard at your 30th birthday? I'd say beard. thank fucking God. Thank you. Like this, I, everything I'm 30 and around. I still can't grow any facial hair. I don't I, at this point I don't think it's gonna happen for me, guys. If you I mean yours would be all patchy and shit like mine, right? I, I don't know. It. I mean, shitty. bro, like if I let out a dirt stash grow, it's the most disgusting. It, it It's objectifyingly disgusting. This like, took there's... years. And a, and a lady at work today thought I was jelly roll. Damn. I was mistaken yeah, for jelly roll and I don't even have facial tattoos. Did you leave? Damn, I dude. wanted I wanted to. I had my hat pulled down. So she just kind of saw this and she went, she saw and she went, oh, my God. And then she looked back up. And she was like, has anyone ever told you this? And I'm like, fucking what? Like, what the, <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with me? And she was like, 
has anyone ever told you that you look like Jelly Roll? And I was like, you're the fucking first. And then I went back to my desk and I was like, fuck. Checked me. how much PTO you had so you could fucking. <laughs> 102 <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, he's like, all right, I'm out. He goes, yeah, clock me out for about eight of those. I'm going I'm home. Fucking crawl into a hole. Damn, dude. That's no rough. disrespect well, to Jelly Roll. He's a great talent. Well, happy dude, birthday dude. to Jack and fucking rest in peace to you. I mean, <laughs> that's so we, we're the day we on the day we celebrate this beautiful baby given to us 30 years ago. We we also celebrate or I guess we mourn the death of Stuart because he got he got murdered at breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Tough Was this like in line at work? You said. Yeah, I walked to the cafe. I want to get get my coffee. Damn, so I was in line for get, coffee. You didn't even get your coffee yet. <laughs> they saw the chains. They saw you. They're like, dude, that, it's got to be Jelly Roll. That's sad. I had my hey, I had my plaid on. I had a chain hat pulled down. I was just mine. You're own. Jelly Rolling around, bro. You, you can't be. You, you cannot be. <laughs> you cannot expect to not be caught all, called well, out when you're just straight up Jelly Roll cosplaying in the middle of Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> I didn't know like he wore a lot of plaid. And so I told my cover, I was like, this lady thought I was Jelly Roll. And he's like, who? And I was like, let me show you. So I Google Jelly Roll, first image, plaid. And he goes, he's just wearing your outfit. Exactly. Yeah. Like. And he's just, <laughs> and my coworker went, yeah. I was like, fuck. Dude, I, I have admittedly, I am not, uh, I, I don't even know how he is big. Like, I, I mean, and then he's got like this dime piece wife. Like, I don't, I do not understand. I don't think he's really that good. I don't know. I, I don't see the appeal of it. Like this weird, like country rap. Dude, fuck, all country I, is rap so now. Weird. Yeah. That, yeah. That song, that song last year was cool. Uh, what, Son of a Sinner. That was a pretty good song. I'm just I mean, hey, I guess. Son of a sinner. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Dude, Stu, I don't know, man. I mean, you you don't have any face tattoos, so that part yeah. is throwing me off. Well, like I said, I had my hat down. I was kind of like, bro. <laughs> that's, I mean, I don't know. You got the chains. You got the black tee. You, the hair color is just about right. I mean, he's a little redder than you are, but bro, your first tattoo and you finally get one, like, because like my birthday this year. My wife's, she, yeah, she's my wife's paying for a tattoo for me this uh, on my birthday this year. Oh, I was gonna say it has to be a Just face tattoo. I thought you were gonna put it off. Cross on my <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna put it off forever because like Stuart Stuart does this stuff where he's like, when I get to this point, I'm gonna do this, and then like, and then we get to that point, and he kind of pushes it back a little bit, and then like, you know, like one day, like well, I'm still waiting for him to wear his Jeremiah Owusu Koromor you know jersey, but it is what it is. Um, he signs a long term deal. I'll get it. Uh, so, but it's one of those things where you know I thought that like yeah, Stuart was really big about be... kissing me on the lips, and then when it came time to do it, he was just like, oh, "I'm not, hey. no, my wife, my wife." I always, I'm I like, always Ugh. had to go sixty five percent of the way growing up. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. No, the I mean, tattoo thing, I just he made me the game. Never got around to it. Yeah. So I what are you gonna tattoos. get? I don't know yet, man. I either want to get Milo from the Descendants on my leg. Or I want to get like that uh, bad brain sailing on ship. Did you get month and a half? Yeah. Well, help me fucking decide then, fucker. Well, I, this is the first I'm hearing about it, asshole. So I, how yeah. am I supposed to help you? And I, you I, get I did, the tramp I, look, stamp. I, told, I know. I know. We started saying I'm Rain Man, but I don't just. I don't just get like a fucking twitch, you know, <laughs> when, when my <laughs> services are needed. Well, we got we got, we got a month, so we'll figure Someone it out. Someone in Springfield needs me. <laughs> I like look up and see my <laughs> see my bat signal. <laughs> I'll get the pop culture rehab logo tramp stamped on me, dude. If I shit, I swear to God, if you go get the pop culture, if you go get this logo tattooed on your lower back, I will pay for it. Tell your tell tell, <laughs> yeah, tell your wife you forget in. about it. <laughs> tell your tell your wife that our birthday present to you will be paying her back because that would Stew. be fucking. What about like a lower back tattoo that just says exit only? <laughs> That'll be just I just mean, so everybody knows. Sense. Yeah, I don't fuck around. You just nip that right in the bud. You know, everybody's like, you're like, oh, no, nope, as, mu nope. as much as the bear cub community loves me, it should I just say it should, it should just say Milo goes to town, and it should just have an arrow pointing straight down your ass crack. That's what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Milo takes head. the long road home. Uh, 
but yeah, no, dude, that'd be sick. I didn't know. That's good. I have been waiting. I have been trying to get Stu- so funny story. So Stuart, I have been trying to get Stuart to get like we've been kind of talking about him getting a tattoo for. I mean, since I started getting tattoos and. <laughs> Back in the day, it used to be the family crest. And the funny story about this is, is that I'm glad it didn't, didn't we didn't, didn't that turn out to not be your family crest or something like that? Or like, well, I mean, that is the Inman family crest of which I am a member of the Inman family, but there, I've, I have a lot less English in me than it turns out. It turns out I'm, I'm a lot more like Turkish and Polish and shit. So I don't know. It sounded like you and Milo and you, you had a little English in you. Right, a little, bit. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little English, dude. Oh, dude. I didn't. I, I found out that that Milo Yiannopoulos guy was fucking. Um, he he, he was recently a intern with Marjorie Taylor Green. Yeah, damn, isn't that fucking think, wild? That is wild. We are talking about two different Milos. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm but, talking about the only Milo I know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We're we talking turned, about we talking about Milo. So who, for who, anybody who, out there who, we're talking about, we're talking about Milo from The Descendants, the lead singer of The Descendants, who uh, is the I mascot. Mean, yeah, he's like the mascot. So, I mean, yeah, front office, can we get a Milo goes to college? Just pull up Milo goes to college uh, or anything Milo. Um, I actually just saw them last year and the last year. It was uh, one of the bucket list things, um, punk rock wise. Yeah. And it was very, very good to finally see. But the Milo uh, thing, like if I had Milo on my leg, where it looks like he's peeking over like Kilroy. Anytime I wear like a pair of like high top vans, I always thought that would be kind of cool. Yeah, Man. I think that'd be pretty boom, sick. boom, Milo. Yeah, dude, that'd be sick. But I thought that's pretty simple and easy, and like that's like a good first tattoo, as opposed to like this like intricate ship with all this shading and shit getting struck by lightning. Because I gotta yeah. have the bad brains bolt. We uh we know a guy that actually Stuart and I know a guy that named his child Milo after this guy. Who? Uh, his I, I'm not gonna his his Frank first name rides his first yeah his first name starts with M, and his last name starts with Odgers. <laughs> oh, cool! I didn't know that. Yes, cool. he named his child Milo after that was like the one cool thing he ever did. <laughs> was named his child Milo. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, well good stuff. Well, happy birthday to Jack and then we'll happy we'll be birthday. celebrating we'll be celebrating Stuart Stuart's uh coming up here uh, beginning of March yeah. and we'll uh we'll have a tattoo reveal because I this is big. It's good shit. We're going to feel like naked in tube socks with Milo looking over his little tubey sock. I still think it would be better if it was Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so just him ass. with him with the make america great again hat just breaking into the capital all landscape on stewart's chest <laughs> all, <laughs> all landscape on St- Dude, the whole scene Dude, it's like a civil so war sick. reenactment <laughs> do it we'll do like, it like george col- washington crossing the delaware do it like a collage of like every american thing in there like hulk hogan rambo just like everybody's on the lawn fucking breaking shit that'd be hot sick. dogs stadium mega glizzies. shaman if you yeah. don't have stadium glizzies on each fucking uh mm. Now collarbone i'm gonna be yes dude i'm talking about every time i walk into a a, a a fucking sporting event the first thing i do i swear to god i won't even i don't even think about anything until i have two hot dogs in my hand it is just it, it's just what it is dude i don't like I'm, hot dogs really anymore but that's where the only place i eat them and i fuck how many up. do you think you could throw down comfortably in a baseball game five Probably there's there's a guy that did uh I, I forget Sir Yacht I think is his name on Twitter, um Cleveland guy uh, who actually I just saw before we got on here was at a bar watching the Bucks game last night and ran into Baker Mayfield which is <laughs> wild. Um, but, I saw um, his short that I think I, you're talking about. But yeah, Sir Yacht. Um, hold on. So he's the Guardians fan, right? Who was? Yeah, I was trying to find up. it. He, he eats a hot eat. dog for every run is scored in the game. Yeah, every run. Yeah, every run scored. I was trying to find like the exact thing. But yeah, so and he did. I think they ended up scoring like, I think they scored like nine or ten runs in that game that he did yeah. it. And, and and he did it. He ate. He sure as shit. He did all types of crazy sh- stuff. He did like he bathed in ketchup for like 
24 hours for something. So what is this guy? Just a baseball fanatic or what's his deal? He's all Cleveland sports. He also, he's the guy that was showing up. I'm pretty sure he's the guy that was showing up to Cleveland events in the where's Waldo outfit. Um, That's cool. Yeah. There's him and Baker, but uh, yeah, this guy right here. So sir. Yeah. Shout out. Shouts out to you. Um, Baker probably has no idea that that dude talked mad shit. Well, he oh, said yeah. he was going to wear his Baker. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure not. Like, I don't know. Look at Baker. Baker can't talk shit to anybody, dude. He should have thanked him for not getting us our higher draft pick for because he couldn't even start seventy percent of the games. Oh no, I own the same shoes as Baker Mayfield. Oops. Damn. Damn. That's I just where we self, lost our I just, first I just self own the. I just self own the fuck out of myself. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ! You, did, you didn't have to let that information. Yeah, out. yeah. I know. I was. <laughs> I was having a, a helicopter drawing moment, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, real quick, real quick. I shout recognize those Nick shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout, yeah out shout out Jake. Yeah. yeah shout out Jake for the for the love on tw- uh, Twitter. He just bought a bought some merch, bought a PCR baseball tee. Buy our stuff. The baseball uh, tee is so fucking good looking. It is. It and is. I, it's the site tee public. Uh, yeah, T Public. T Public. Yeah. So, and, and all our links are in our uh, all of our bios. So, just go buy some stuff. It, it's good stuff, I and mean, we put that stuff on sale all the time. So, make it happen. Uh, and 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 if you guys make buy our stuff, we can make cooler stuff because like we actually have ideas and good ideas, but we can't afford. We're not. We're not gonna just. <laughs> who do you think we are? Uh, so buy it. <laughs> if, that was a good you, Shark Tank pitch. <laughs> if you buy it, if you buy it. It will come. I promise. Like that. Yeah. That's like how we're not, we're gonna spend it only on shit for the show. It's not like it's going in my pocket or anything. I'm actually gonna. They're gonna. I'm spending it on hallucinogenic drugs. I'm gonna buy it, but everything else goes towards. He's gonna expand his mind so we can expand our we're audience. Pooling our money for the show. We're holding on to it. We're gonna get a sleep deprivation, a sensory deprivation tank. I just want to it, shine. It's, it's, it's a sleep deprivation and a sensory deprivation. Whatever. Yeah. Just it's really sensory deprivation. I just want to be. De- I just want to be deprived of everything. Yeah. <laughs> and a, this is where we think of our new shit. Yeah, I just want to float like that. Is that what that is? The pool of water where you just float in the pool. Yeah, my is buddy. That- uh, my buddy Dave has done that a few times. Shout out Dave. Black letter tattoos. I saw he just got his sign put up today. Shout out to that. That motherfucker looks yeah. clean. You can hear uh, your own heart so- beating. Yeah, it's wild. I've, um, I've been I've been to the one in downtown St. Louis by Slew's campus. It's like on Olive or something like that. Mm-hmm. And bro, I I had a pretty decent experience for the first like ten minutes in, and then the inevitable scratch on the nose moment happens, and your hands like are sitting in salt water, right? And if you go to like touch your nose, there's a a better than not chance that you're going to get fucking salt water in your eye and that's what happened to me so for the next like 20 to 30 minutes i'm just like like salt water's burning in my fucking eye and i'm trying to they're like relax relax and i'm like i dude i need to get the fuck out of here i got it out like five minutes early i had like paid like two hundred dollars for like a couple session and my girl was like still in there i'd like wait in the lobby in a fucking robe and i'm just like getting dressed i'm like what the everybody's fuck like who, everybody's that? like everybody's like who's this loser you had to stand like the couldn't make it section <laughs> yeah, why, salt, dude. why salt water because the That's salt makes you float yeah so they put so much salt in there so that you're uh denser than the water or whatever i don't know i'm not a scientist but you float and they warm the water to be 98.6 degrees. So once you are relaxing in there, you do kind of I am one lose you lose sight of where your body starts and ends and where the water is because it's oh my God. yeah. So that's, that's kind of, that was the, that was the cool aspect about it. I'm not gonna lie, but like I said, it was only cool for me for 10 minutes because I'm a fucking. I, sounds I'm like schizo- dude. Yeah, like I'm like a schizo. See, like I like just fucking constantly. Be that's what I'm saying. Like, if I'm gonna do something like that, like just find me a shaman, deli- just deliver me some toad venom, and let's 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 really blast off. Geez, let's really blast off. That's that is what I want to do. Like I have I have done every drug I've ever wanted to do. I've done every I've done every substance experience i could ever ask for in life uh besides that 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 is all i want and like you know i mean it, for people who it's don't know that you know, and I, cat piss for me but yeah 
Yeah, I mean, dude, I, are you trying to huff some cat piss? Is that what you're trying to do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah bro, it, dude. those some are my only shit. two bucket lists. But yeah. Dude, you're trying to just huff some human shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, what was that? There was like, I don't know if it's true, but I guess you was it you shit in a bag and you like seal it up and put it in the yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah, you put like, it in the open sun. It, open it up and it's like. Bleh. Yeah, and all oh, the fumes like fell. are apparently like, like it makes you trip balls apparently. That guy that. Uh, there was a guy that just died recently. Uh, the guy who like didn't shower for like 60 years and just lived in the streets or whatever. And people just let him live in the streets. He, that's how he got high. He smoked animal shit. He had a little pipe no that he had metal. found and he yeah. smoked animal shit. You're that's how he got high. To, you're supposed to uh, eat the thing that grows in the shit. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but, but my, but back, all I want is I, I want to, I, and I did DMT like loosely, you know, back in the day, and, but I was on a bunch of other shit. So I didn't really get the full experience. And I love, you know, I love me some hallucinogenics. Uh, I, you know, I love shrooms and stuff like that. So I, I would just, that's all I want to do. And I don't do anything much anymore. I'm a pretty boring guy. You know, I don't, everybody knows here that I don't, I haven't drank in three and a half, four years, almost four years now. So it's like, I, you know, I don't do any drugs. I don't do any of the party drugs anymore. Like we, I was just talking to somebody this the other about this the other day. Like, could you imagine somebody offering you cocaine today? Like, I would rather lay on a highway. <laughs> you know what I'm like, That's why I, I literally would rather. When I scratched my nose the other week, when I, and somebody was like, "Did you just do coke?" I was like, "No, <laughs> like, yeah, well, I'm fucking like, thirty. Yeah, like, <laughs> Girl, yeah, seriously, too old. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm literally hit him with a. I'm getting too old for this shit." <laughs> Like I watched Midsummer for the first time this weekend, and the bit in, in that movie's fucked up. There's a lot of crazy shit happening in this movie, but the biggest I pop was towards the beginning where they all like took mushrooms, and there's a scene where the girl started to, her trip started to go bad, and she's out in a field, so she's at a very big, expansive place, and she ran into like a shed, and as she's running into the shed, I go no <laughs> because I know that like the moment you go from this giant space to like the tiny space it, it, or going from a small space to an open space will fuck you so hard and I, and like my wife and her friend who were watching with me they went to like you know christian college very good never partied and they're like what and i was like all right let me explain <laughs> like yeah, pull up a chair if, if, if you if you change the space you're in when you're rolling it's game over dude yeah it's i, I mean it's a risk i mean it, it, it's definitely it's wild it, and so, I need so, it. So blasting off on DMT sounds the coolest because like every time you hear about it, everybody's like, oh, you fucking you meet these crystal alien figures and they tell you about the universe. But I can't remember anything that they said. So, uh, yeah. Well, you just hear so I'm many like, people who are like, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, like it made I mean, it literally made Mike Tyson nonviolent. I mean, he he contributes that to like being why he like lost the his his want to hurt people like yeah, it's why he i was gonna beat your ass but then i saw them fractals and now i changed it, my he mind. Do, and he like does this he got <laughs> he got uh fractals. come on that was those fractals <laughs> he can't yeah, say pretty fractals good. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's too good but uh he he got henry cejudo to do it henry cejudo swore by it you know i mean when you're getting olympic champions and Mike Tyson does it. I mean, Mike Tyson does this stuff like regularly. Like it's like a hobby Dude, for him. So I, a, and Joe I Rogan does impulsive it. On, we talked about impulsive on the last episode, but there, he went on that show, dude, and he is literally taking handfuls of mushrooms and they're like, yep. you won't do that. And he's like, hum, num, 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 like eat them like oh, that. Shit. Like, bro, yeah. he's like, he's like, well, I used so to not like a like, different person now. He's like, Dude, I used to knock out like 10 grams does. of mushroom. He's like, I not used to knock out 10 grams of mushrooms just like a day. I'm like, I just what? thought he smoked a lot of weed. Have you ever watched his podcast? Like all, every episode he does, he's like on mushrooms. Like he's he's interviewing you high yeah. as shit. Like he is. I, knew, I thought he was just high, like smoking oh. weed. No, I he's gone. I, I've never seen. I, I never saw him. Yeah. Like so that. you need, I, I believe it was our arch enemy, Joe Rogan, uh, that did the interview. I think it's that interview with Tyson where he goes into this and they kind of talk about it. Cause Rogan's a big uh, DMT guy or, you know, to toad venom fucking um, right. shaman type guy. And he says, he's like, you know, I, the first time I did this, he goes, when I came back down, he's like, I just lost. He goes, that's what took the violence out of me. He's like, it changed who I am and it made me a nonviolent person and it made me not want to hurt anybody. And, and now Mike Tyson does just psychedelics 
as a hobby. Like it's like literally. So now like he got, like I said, he, he had Henry Cejudo come on his podcast and he got Henry. He took Henry Cejudo and got him just, you know, uh, took to a shaman and had it distributed. And Henry Cejudo was like, it was the most life changing thing in the world. You know, and this is a five. How can we compete with this? How, yeah. I don't know. Dude, you we need to fuck, do it though. We need to figure yeah, out where yeah, and how Tyson to do this. Shoving fucking shrooms down people's throats. You got, what's this, a B reel? He's got that podcast in his car where they just hot box in the car. Well, let's interview. Talk. God damn it. We can't so, we need, so we I can. know somebody. You, got it. In I, you, you want me to bring the rig? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Baby, I ripped think, abs for 90 minutes. You guys will think this is interesting. So I, I know this guy in Nashville, and he's kind of like, um, he's, he's out there, right? And that, I'll just leave it at that. And he and his girlfriend, or sorry, his new his fiance turning wife part of what they're doing for their honeymoon is that uh and they had they're going to take ayahuasca in the middle of the desert but before Let's they go. do that they they paid for this whole program that you have to go through for in order for the shaman to like do the ritual for you and it's like six weeks of like a very strict diet like drinking like w- like liquids and all this crazy shit but apparently like once you get there they take you like completely under their like supervision and they walk they, it's basically go. a vision it's a vision quest like they like how do you do this the, I, they administer the like you go down to like south america that's where they're going i don't know where in south america but somewhere down there and it's where the ayahuasca is from and the guy like the shaman like literally walks them through it and everybody who like does it says it's like one of the craziest experiences of their life dude so. i'm telling you that's that's sick like i am very jealous of them that's cool that's shit tough. and like i want inf- more information about that <laughs> like i want yeah, you to give me i'll see if i can me- if i can message him and tell me ask, like, ask him what program it is because that's what oh. i want like that's all i want i just want happy tripping dude yeah sting went to brazil and he took an ayahuasca trip and he lived his life all over again and then he came out of it and he was like, I need to write this down. And then he wrote his memoirs and it's a really good read. But like, he, cause he had to live his whole life over again. I was is like, that this sounds is incredible. Is, so he, could he fuck for days before that? <laughs> I think so. Okay. So sting was, if anybody doesn't know, sting literally has to block days off of his calendar when he fucks. Sting fucked through nine 11. Straight up, straight through nine 11. What, I mean, what what, what is the actual? He, story? he pulled out I, on the twelfth, and he's like, "Fucking that. what?" You didn't know? Oh, you don't know about this? No. So tell me. Oh, tell me Sting, 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 and his wife are like really into like tantric sex, where they just like, and that just, lasts for hours, right? Yeah, they just hold like yoga positions in each other for hours. Is, is that what the Kama Sutra is? No, the Kama Sutra is just different. Teach me uh, about sex, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> he he readjusts. He's Sue. like, this is going to take a while. Wasn't yeah, it okay. Sue? Wasn't her name Sue? Talk sex with Sue? Yeah, Sue talk Johansson, sex. dude. I fucking Sue. love Sue. talk Sue sex with Stu, Stu Johansson. Let's go. <laughs> talk sex with Stu Johansson. <laughs> with Stu Johansson. Let's go. <laughs> Please, dude. On Tell the us about it, network. Stuart. So babies are made how? Be- birds, bees? <laughs> no, but what is tantric sex and what, 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 was, what was Sting doing? Well, it's it's like yoga poses, but like you maintain insertion and and it's just you you stay hard for hours. You're in for hours. You like you fight the urge to like thrust and like it's just so you're like a Mormon. Like you fight the urge to thrust that way, or like I mean, eventually there's a climax, but like it's at I mean, you're at the fucking peak where you're probably losing yourself at that point. Yeah, nobody's jumping on the bed around you. Yeah. <laughs> is that when they say like your chakras are going off and everything and like i'm sure they say some goofy shit like that it sounds sure. like some, some stuff that yeah sounds like some sting shit he's like and, we and, don't and this whole time it's just with one woman he's been moved that woman right there from, it, it's just uh, her the whole her the whole time he's not seven her hours he's not yeah. taking a tag team swap and just like no, tag, tagging out for a little dude, bit because they're not having sex they're they're finding their chakras like are they replenishing they're... liquids like what's going on is there they're not involved? exchanging liquids there's no there's no loss of liquid he's, he's retaining <laughs> all water <laughs> it's like nuclear fission of sex there's just no there's no loss of energy i bet sting i bet he listens to his own music too while it's happening 100 percent. it's so pretentious 
you know he's listening and and not like police music like it's like that shitty stuff. desert rose shit I see the light, yeah. yeah it's only, shit, really he wrote for, shit. It's only anything, shit he wrote for movie soundtracks <laughs> anything <laughs> he wrote on a pan flute <laughs> like Jeez. i'll never forget him coming to uh riverport uh with annie lennox and it was and uh, my stepfather actually got a it's it's like one of the weirder like member like memorabilia things he memorabilia things he has but he has a thing of hair gel that both Annie Lennox and Sting used before the show that's so where he's got like, hair cool. gel he pretty much looks like fucking Howie Mandel nowadays yeah i mean it's just like one of those like weird things like backstage things you only get like you know that Annie like Lennox you don't is pomade Cool. Yeah, her pomade. Yeah, basically. Cool. And like, I, and it I, like had her fingers. Like you could see that, like where she. Yeah. Spoons, That's like uh, Sebastian. Sebastian Bach has a styrofoam cup that Gene Simmons used to put the drink the fake blood before he spat it out. He's like got that. He's also got a bunch of sick ass model trains. Sebastian Bach has model trains. Oh Bro, my God, Sebastian Stuart. Bach is like the model train. Oh dude. yeah, trailer park. <laughs> Jesus the, uh, Christ. Yeah, dude. Sebastian, Swayze but, train, I, the Swayze the train. Swayze, the, yeah, the Swayze I heard they train. have some pretty sweet train, uh, fucking trains here in Bangor. <laughs> and the little kid, the little kid, just like looking on with a little conductor hat. So, we had trailer Park Boy legend. Yeah. Holy shit! I forgot about that season. Yeah, at, can you? When the he showed Express up, Express taking weed all the way through the woods <laughs> to the United States and back with, or no, it goes to the United States with cigarettes and then it comes back with weed or whatever. Oh, or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. See, I would love to have <laughs> weird stuff like that. Like, I think it'd be cool to have like a room in your house full of like stuff like that. Like, uh, for instance, Todd Oyong, who got the uh, the guy who uh, Stuart and I were just talking about the other day, the I shoot shows guy. Um, who did the you know the rancid shows who show, shoot all those shows? Um, he actually got the microphone. Uh, th- so I don't. We may have talked about this on the show. I don't know if we talked oh, about yeah, this on show. But uh, Jack, when Jack and I were at Warped Tour back in the day, and um, the headliner was uh, who was it? Uh, what was what's the man's name? Jim, Jim Class Jim Heroes. Class Heroes. Yeah, Jim Class Heroes, and, and Katy Perry was there. Actually, Jim Class Heroes playing. just had that awesome. Their one good song was the rip. It, it sampled the already '70s song that was famous. The "Take a Look at My Girlfriend," she's the only one I got. Banana. That was a yeah. Great so one. they were they were popping, and uh, somebody in the crowd uh, yelled a racial slur at him, and he took the microphone and hit the guy in the head with it in in the front row and it you left a huge dent in the it was uh, not an unprovoked attack though. right so jack and i obviously this is they're the headliner so obviously after this people are getting rushed out of riverport um jack they stopped and i the go, show immediately they stopped the show immediately and they arrest travis the lead singer of on stage gym class like, yeah they arrest him pull him off stage jack and i are backstage uh, we see him get pulled. He comes. He walks right by us. Gets put in a cop car. That's the day we find out that he has a prosthetic leg. Uh, yeah. He actually has a fake leg, and we he just came full circle. On the so he came, so right. Yeah. 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 So maybe then, it was uh, Travi who threw uh, it at the, the at the fucking concert. Yeah. yeah maybe push a T. Yeah. Maybe 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 that's the leg at the push a T concert. But uh, <laughs> anyway, the that microphone. Todd Oyong got that microphone. Nice. Uh, he Does actually he owned it. Yeah, it's, so he if you go, I don't know if I shoot shows is a is a is a website anymore, but like that was the name of his website back in the day where he used to upload all his uh, footage and pictures of shows. He did a couple of rancid shows back in the day uh, that I went to that were great. Um, but he had a picture of the microphone with the big head dent in it. And I'm like, that is one of the coolest things. Wouldn't you think that would have had to have been used in like evidence or something like that? I don't know. Like, I don't know if the guy sued. It's warped tour. It's the it's the fucking wild west out there. Anything can happen. Yeah. Can, uh, Ask yeah, fucking yeah. Uh, uh, blood on the dance floor. Anything can happen, dude. And under warp tour, warp tour was really cool for a very short amount of time. I mean, it was cool for about twenty years. You think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you think about the first one in like '95 with like Sublime, and like yeah, but now, 
but now I look at like the lineup and I know I'm an old man. I'm an old man, but like I don't even know one of the bands. I don't even know any of these bands. Well, they're it, not e- uh, even at the end of it. There was still a couple, you know, that you could always kind of it was safe to assume that like you know, effects would be there or like Big D. Yeah, Big D and the Kiss Able at least would at least be there, or like Bouncing yeah, Souls right. would at least be there. Big D and the Kids Table. <laughs> yes. Dude, I haven't heard that in maybe a decade. I still listen. I still listen to Big D quite frequently. Fluent and stroll, uh, man. Yeah, I'll have to find a picture of that the uh, the that microphone because it, it was up somewhere and it, yeah, it's it's crazy. But I I, I found the the it video was... on. It was complete it, fucking chaos. At it River was wild Field that day. Like there, like people were genuinely like freaking out. And there was like at one point, there was like a line of cops that was like separating, uh, I guess, security, like the fans from the performers, right? And like I remember, like everybody's trying to rush towards Travi McCoy because he's basically like, walk, getting walked through the crowd, and everybody's like trying to get close to him. And all these cops are like pushing people back. And of course, like Nick has like, you know, he worked there and all that can like the connections and stuff. And like the two security guys like look at Nick and they're, they're like, come with me now. We got to get the, you the fuck out of here. It was yeah. like it felt like behind enemy lines at that time. Like it was it truly was a ridiculously like chaotic scenario. So, yeah, it was yeah. pretty wild. I there very, very few times that I go to a warp tour and like it wasn't just a mixture of like it was fun but i also like hated it and it was miserable and like the last warp tour i went to uh shannon and i went uh just because we had to see it one more time before it came through and it was actually pretty good safe ferris was there um so we got to see no our yeah moline powell monique powell Mm -hmm. um and sadly though she looked coked up and we were like Shan and I were like, damn, like, look how wild she's going on stage. She's, she's, she's going pretty wild. She's looking dehydrated. And like, she had a meet and greet afterwards. And we're like, this is so tight. We're about to go meet Monique Powell. And we waited in line. And then they came out and said that she wasn't doing well and that she was on the bus and they canceled the meet and greet. So I never got to meet Monique Powell. Dude, we're talking so funny. Nick and I used to know this girl and I won't, I won't say her name. We'll, We'll just call her Sally. And Sally was like 16 years old and she would like find a way to get backstage and she would fuck every single one of the bands. And it was like all the her, emo bands, all the emo bands, bro. And it was like just wild to think about that in retrospect as a as a, an adult man. Just God, those guys. What, what is your favorite? What is what? what's your favorite report show ever? Uh, you saw personally? Maybe maybe that one. But um, I think. Okay, so the most memorable concert is my first concert, which was there as well, and it was Kiss. I saw Kiss with you because there was just I got dragged along to things like that at that Stuart time. Stuart was there. Who was the opening act? Was it Poison? Yeah, you were there. It was that. It was the Rock Rock Across the Nation tour with Poison. Remember yeah, they're like two thousand and four. Yeah, it was. Their, their it was a fair. Farewell. It was one of their many farewell tours. I remember that. But yeah, he said that that was when. Uh, uh, Paul Stanley yelled, "Thank you, thank you, Chicago!" I, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, then, I, but I, then I, earlier he was like, "He's like, yeah, St. Louis is pretty cool." He's like, "I like Nelly. He's a good dude." <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dude. And they uh, and they well they edited it on the CD that you could buy. You could buy the CD because they sold the live version, and they and that, they yeah, just the straight up. Ed- yeah, they just edited Chicago out. It'd <laughs> be hilarious to yeah, just have it be like hello, and then like it just cut like a hard cut St. Louis. St. Louis, St. Louis is pretty hot tonight. Be, like so, so clearly hot. not here. Yeah, have to yeah. <laughs> just, it's just it, like it's, they literally cut the track. The crowd noise is gone. Everything. St. Louis. St. So. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> it feels real good to be in St. Louis. It's like, it's like it's like our pop that that animated voice you put our on the intros it's like yeah <laughs> it's, 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 it's like that voice. little yeah the tiktok voice <laughs> Saint Louis. Uh, yeah. no i take that back though my the best concert i went to at riverport um this is 
it may have been the same war tour it may have been a different one but there was one where some 41 was playing on the big stage right and at that time i was if it if i if it was 2010 i was weighing like 175 pounds that's important i'll tell you why because <laughs> um <Not water> weight. <laughs> because nick and i uh somebody convinced me uh, and i at that time was six foot that it'd be a good idea to crowd surf for the first time and the song he's Fat five seven now by the yeah. way, he's yeah, I, I keep <laughs> so uh yeah, don't smoke cigarettes. Um five foot uh so I was like six foot, 170 pounds, and I never crowd surfed before. Fat lip comes on, I'm like, storm to the party, like my name is I'm, I'm I'm like banging. All of a sudden I, I I jump up and I'll never forget this. So like first like wave of the crowd surf went well. I got caught. <laughs> I was like, my feet were up. Everything was good. We were, we were rolling, baby. And then the undertow. Bro. <laughs> and somebody thought it'd be a really funny idea to just <clears throat> lift me up with their full weight like, and just throw me like a projectile, like four people ahead. And I just like wiped out these like teenage girls, like fucking like a bunch Jeez. of dudes. Like everybody was pissed. Like, dude, you are so big. Why are you crowd surfing? And I'm like, so stupid i'm like oh like you know what i mean like dude because i want that, to that, bitch but i always remember that that was definitely the best moment i ever had at river yeah don't let anybody don't let anybody gatekeep crowd surfing like there i, I we back I mean, to the don't point, let we my ask no well, <laughs> no well dude there's yeah, liabilities aren't there there's look well i back to the just like a short side note to the prosthetic leg thing earlier i was gonna say some of the you we were like is anybody you're like what is some of the craziest things you've ever thrown on stage I love when like at punk rock shows and metal shows when they make, when they crowd surf dudes in wheelchairs, that is my favorite. Some of my favorite shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like that want is, to do yeah. I love yeah. that. Shit. Like, look at him, look at him. Yeah. Live the dream. Live Bro, it, have you ever I seen that mother? It. You ever seen that fucking kid in the wheelchair at the Stevie Aoki concert who gets hit with a full sheet cake? to the face oh, yeah dude. he like he like shot puts the cake into the kid dude, it literally fucking smacks the shit out of this kid like and he's he like so happy he's like it's, it's the best day of his life like they like lift him up like simba and lion king they're like and everybody's supposed to be like, this beautiful ah! moment yeah that's so good actually or if you go see the aquabats and it's like you know because it's all old punkers I've that are in their seen 30s and 40s it kills me but if when you go to an aquabats show it's all the punks and they lift their kids up, and uh, it is just the kids crowd surfing. Eight. Have you nine, seen them? Not live personally, but if you watch any of their shows, it's just the punk parents lifting the kids up and all crowd surfing the kids. Dude, I, I just like it's like uh, it's like a baptism of punk rock. It's great. <laughs> yeah. For anybody, I seriously, if no matter who you are out there, no matter what music you listen to, listen to the Aquabats once. Just Get do your it. Kids once. in the Aquabats. Like the guy, they they created Yo Gabba Gabba. So like they, yeah. I mean, but like, but before that, they were. That's, Dude, that's what Parker I tried started. at. The, it's what I tried at the Wuhan market last week. The Aquabat, you know, <laughs> the Aquabat. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, little, 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 Jack little, little, awesome. soup, little soup, a little Aquabat soup, baby. <laughs> that's good shit. Um, but dude, yeah, seriously, your life will be better because of it. And like I said, Travis Barker started there. So if you need like any more little, you know, if, if you're like, ew, I don't want to listen to that. Just think your little Travis Barker before he, who he was a Kardashian was Tito. Was Von, Baron Von Tito. Yeah. Baron Von Tito. Before but, he um, was the ultimate man, he was punk rock. Okay. He And not even, he was this little sky guy in an outfit, dude. He was, he was. dirty fucking punk dude in the Aquabats. But so okay, so Stuart, if you had to pick your favorite river port, I, I it's gonna I might I'm not gonna be able to pick one. I'm gonna have to pick like a couple. Like I, I mean there's best, too many. I mean, I'll I'll give you two just because of the experience and the memories made, and then two just like concert wise. Best concert I ever seen, so I know one Zach Brown band. Yes, great band. Somehow it, it's the best live show I've ever seen in my life, and it's a country artist, and I'm not like a huge country dude. I've seen them on, live. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, they're we've an seen incredible them. Yeah, well, show. we watched them together live. Stuart and I watched them. Even I've, if you're I've not a country fan, twice in Nashville, they're incredible. I wish they didn't play uh, what would, Enter Sandman. The fact that they play Enter Sandman <laughs> of all like cover tunes is kind of weak, but they are an incredible live band. And if even if you're not a country fan, go see them. They're insane. Best uh, 
<laughs> I mean, that was the best drinking night after a show I think I ever had. Like when we all, because I think Andy even stayed for that. Yeah. Remember when we all just like got blackout. I mean, we that was, was like, such a fun just a good show. Day. Yeah, that was a good, such a good show. And we've seen best, it, yeah, like anyway. just overall day. I think it had to be probably like one a, of. Oh, sorry, they're like a chill band too. So the crowd's usually pretty cool at a Zach Brown band. Well, show. I mean, is. Remember seeing Zach Brown and the band enter the day of the show before the show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where you know you, you we're back there like stacking, ke- you know, uh, beer, getting ready to like load up shit, and you hear this rumbling in the distance, and you look at the gate, and usually they'll open like half the gate to let cars in occasionally. Motherfuckers on the radio, and they open up both sides of the gate, and you're like, "What the fuck? What, what's coming in? All the buses are here. What the fuck?" And you see this motorcycle gang like fifty deep. And it's Dude, just all so these badass sick. leather That's clad insane. bikers. And at the very front of the uh, thing is Zach Brown with his beanie on and his bass player, the guy that has like the handlebar mustache, leading the fucking pack with their fucking like crazy like That's pretty dope. choppers. And they come in in one thing and they, they park their bikes and they're with all these dudes and they start breaking out barbecue grills and they just start grilling and chilling before the show. And I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. Blackberry Smoke opened that show, didn't they? Blackberry Smoke did open that show. Dude, that Blackberry tour. Blackberry Smoke, another band. If you guys don't, like, if you like Southern Rock, like they are, dude, they're, they're so good. they're so good. But that there guy was handlebar. His mustache, his chops are the some of the nastiest chops ever. But uh, I mean, there was a, it was one of the metal tours. It was like Rockstar Energy Festival. And it was the one where, like, uh, we were sitting in the tent with, like, with um, MC Lunchbox and Chamba. Yes, sir. We used to kick it with that old Rasta guy. Oh, Dylan. Who was always Dylan on the all. Ch- yeah. He was always selling T-shirts and and lighters that. and shit. We were, we were kicking with Chamba, and that that uh, that big girl was like, it was a really hot day, and that big girl was sweating outside the tent. And we're, you know, we 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 were high, we were drinking, we were just having a great fucking time. And I kept checking on this lady because I'm like, it's really hot out here. She's a big girl wearing leather. <laughs> like She's going to drop. And so I'm like, hey, do you need some water or something? And she's like, no, I got water. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And like an hour goes by. And she's still out there. I'm like, hey, you need some water? She's like, yeah, my water ran out. So I give her one of our like free waters. And I give her like one of those like rock star lemonades. You know, I'm like, stay hydrated. Stay cool. You want to come in the tent and cool off a little bit? We got a fan, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, no, I'm cool. And then, like, another hour goes by, and this hand reaches out from outside the tent and, like, grabs me. And I look out, and it's this big, burly, metal biker dude. And he's like, were you the guy talking to my girl? And I'm like, I'm going to fucking die right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just this me. He's got, like, a noose tattooed around his neck. And uh, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I was just, you know, making sure she's cool. And he's like, brother, thank you so fucking much. <laughs> and he like goes in. He goes in for the fist bump, and like I, I think it was a fist bump. And so like I put out my hand. And he's like, "Open your hand," and he drops a big fucking joint in my hand. And I'm like, "Ooh!" So I pocket <laughs> it real quick. And this is when MC Lunchbox got bit by that brown recluse, and he had to go to the hospital. Yeah, dude. I'll and never so forget we're that waiting. Shit. We're waiting for Lunchy to come back from the hospital, back to the uh, festival, and we're and we're texting. We're like, "Dude, hurry back. We got a surprise." He comes back from the hospital. His legs all like wrapped up. We're like, dude, we got a, this giant like gram joint. Let's go out. Let's climb the fucking hill. And I remember like no one was on the hill. And we were just looking. It's, it's like three kings looking out over the kingdom. And we just sat there in the grass just smoking this fat fucking joint. And yeah, that was the best titties. memory I had. Dude, uh, MC, remember when a side note to those stories, remember, sorry, Shan, for this, but just because I have to, I have to tell my wild child stories. We we're uh, giving discounts to girls. Yeah. When I got, well, you talking about when I, yeah, and I dated a girl because she showed me her titties at Point Fest and I gave her a <laughs> t-shirt and I dated, and then I dated her for, for a while. <laughs> for like six years. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't date my chick, but we, you dated yours. <laughs> it was kind of over it for me after that night. But that was we both uh, had a good time. Yeah, that night. yeah. That Nick, was can wild. I tell? I don't know if you remember this. I also have one of my most horrifying moments of my adolescence at Riverport. I'm wondering if you remember this as well. John Mayer concert, 
two thousand aughts. I bet that's a Gr gorgeous crowd. Amp amp ver the on the amphitheater tail. grass. Tracking. Girl in a white sundress, blackout drunk. Is this dude? I yeah, knows? dude. I can't. Yeah, I can remember the hairiest asshole I've ever seen in Bro, my life. No, it wasn't. Ha oh, no, no, no. Okay, let me just dirty. Tell you. Dude. So, so what happened was this girl black just passed out, blackout drunk. Like the show, John Mayer hadn't even gotten on stage yet. She was like, her friends pretty much like pushed her in while they're like, we're not missing this shit, right? So she's blackout drunk and security has to come by and they can't get her up to like leave to like bring her anywhere where she can get help. So the big fucking burly bouncer type guy there at work in security picks her up like a baby. Right. But she's not wearing underwear and she's wearing a sundress. Right. So as he lifts her up, he flashes her ass all to everybody on the amphitheater but she's been blackout drunk and she shit herself yeah that, so yeah, as he lifts so her funny, up dude. pancake smashed shit <laughs> on an ass just gets lifted up like, like again just for the world to fucking see and i will always remember like just like how she's waiting up, bro i was literally like what did I just waiting see? on the world to change <laughs> So yeah, that's that's probably the worst fucking thing that can happen. <laughs> oh, I totally forget. It was a white dress, dude. I'll never forget. I, I, I literally like I I can tell you within 15 feet of where that happened on the on the amphitheater just because oh of how bad it was. Oh, my God. oh dude. Oh, you could sink a putt from my memory. She's looking for a was. dress to change. <laughs> yes, I yeah. like, dude, she's she poo pooed herself. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, yeah, I tell totally you. Some that. girls are like a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, Riverport has, has provided some very, very, I mean, I those are half formative my, memories. Half my life there, but. If I Her body to... was definitely a wonderland, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Fucking hell, you know, I don't know what she ate, but to produce that, what goes on inside that body, but it's definitely a wonderland, my friend. Dude, oh, dude who I says even... you can't get I don't drunk? Care. I, don't care. I don't care how, how much you love somebody. Like her boyfriend, if she had one. At least felt a little different after that. Like, it's been a like long he loved her a night little in Maryland. Bro, I, I like to imagine that. I like to imagine that security <laughs> took her out like behind the fence and just sprayed her down <laughs> with a hose. Just like, sprayed her ass. You're not coming in the house, and we're burning bro, we're the dress. Not, bro, we're not putting you in. Yeah, we're not putting you on a bench or anything. Like <laughs> you better you not get my car off of the grass. You have to uh, sit on newspapers. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, that's terrible. But yeah, if I had to, but if I had to go back to what we're talking about, if I if I had to pick <laughs> my, my, my like favorite shows at Report, I, I mean, I would definitely put as far as fun shows. I so Zach Brown would be up there as far as experiences, <clears throat> fun shows that I have seen live that yeah. I didn't appreciate as much of the time, but I remember having a great time at was Chicago and Earth, Wind, and Fire. I saw that as a kid. What a great and that show. was a great yeah. show. Yeah, I was there. Um, dual headline. Yeah, yes. So then they closed the show together, together Aww. on stage. Um, super sick show. Um, I was there for the last Ozfest, or I was there for one of the last Ozfests where System of a Down played, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but my some of my, my favorite shows, like you know, I've had a lot of great shows. I mean, I've been to so many shows that were report. Like Rush was a great experience. You know. Um, very great Double experience. Rush, one Double of the Rush best counts. shows. Yeah, they're one of the best live bands you'll ever see. But some of the best experience, like memories I have show wise, are when Opposite Attack were still a thing and they were hot. And we all were like, you know, we'd all were just going, we would go see Opposite Attack as much as we possibly could. They were slaying the battle of the band, our battle for point fests at uh, Pops over and over. Hey. They just kept winning. They, kept, they won so much that they quit having to compete. They just, um, they, you know, they, they literally, they just got given a spot, but it was great that there was that show where the street dogs opened a point fest and it was the wildest point fest. Like it was like, they were the very first show. Um, and then, and then they came and watched opposite attack and I'll just never forget like how, like, I, it was just so cool for those couple of years where like we were, I was watching somebody like that I knew like show up and yeah. like play 
Riverport. I thought those were some of the best times. Like, I really enjoyed that. And like, I don't know. We were just like in the, the, the perfect age of like, you know, and we were, we were like still going to shows all the time and stuff like that. And then like this show, this band that we were going to like hole in the wall shit places to see, they were like opening up for bad fish. You know, that was like the biggest they would get. And then we were like watching them play in amphitheater with bad fish. Mike. And um, what was their, what was their other band before that? Scotty don't. Scotty don't, yes. Yeah. Badfish, Scotty don't, and opposite attack. Opposite attack, and they kept playing on my birthday every year. Um, yeah, like two years in a row. Like I remember two years in a row. You were thick as Steve's with those guys. Yeah, they were. They're my boys. Um, they were. They're to me still. They're the best. You know, I don't know. I, to me, they're the best local band probably from St. Louis. There's a few other ones like Mu330 and stuff that are like obviously got bigger. Urge. The urge, Story you know, of the stuff. Year, but, bro, dude, yeah. Until yeah, the yeah. day I die. The fuck as far as dies. like bands that never got out of St. Louis, like local band wise, they're probably at the top for me. They're just so good. Uh, but it was cool. Like we st- watching Mike McClogan of the street dogs who started the dropkick Murphys yeah. for people who don't know that yeah. watch my buddies play. And then the worst turn of luck ever. They meet them after they get off stage. They tell them we, at- so they find out that opposite attack has a CD release party coming up because they were so good because they were like the only other punk band on the on the uh bill um so they were like of course we're gonna go see them and we're gonna you know this punk band whatever so they're like okay well we actually have an open day on our schedule and our tour so street dogs were going to come to st louis play pops and open or either open or like maybe i guess headline feature. still you know feature on this <clears throat> on, on opposite attacks uh a CD release. release party record release party and on their way here their bus broke down and it it never happened. They they were on Hellcat records at the time. So it's like, you know, you got to think like they come here, they get a CD release party. Opposite attack gets their shit passed around at Hellcat rec. You know, it's, it's crushing. Um, but what could have been, yeah. Oh, what could have been, um, but yeah. Uh, so I I would say those are probably some of the best. I, but I report was, Man, I miss those days. Still think about it all the time. Nick, I, I know you probably haven't ruled it out entirely because just you never want to give up on a dream, but what percentage do you think you still have of getting signed to Hellcat Records in some shape or capacity? Whether it be through well, like a producer deal or something. Probably not much. I don't think they do much anymore. Well, like they they come it's out with pirate like a, press now. Yeah. It's like it's like when Tim's Stuart realized he, it's like yeah. when Stuart realized he would never be the the WWE champion. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard pill to swallow. A hard pill to swallow, dude. Don't it tell it him, really man. was. Yeah, it's it's a shame. All Sorry, I'm, I'm, dropping, be... I'm dropping these bombs because I just turned 30 and that's all I can think about now. Just think about right. mortality. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I'll never be WWE champion. I'll never I'll never just... I'll never get to pin Jeff Hardy in WrestleMania. I just wanted the intercontinental belt. It was the only, it was the work <laughs> it was the working man's belt, dude. It was right. what mattered the most. Just one just one reign. Um, that white intercontinental belt. But anyway, so w- earlier we talked about how we were celebrating fucking Jack's birth, the birth of our baby, and the <laughs> death boy, of Stuart. I'm older than you. The death of our, the death of Stuart for uh, I forget why. Oh, because a jelly roll. <laughs> but another thing that was dying that uh, ego death. Uh, another thing that's going to be uh, dying is. Uh, if you see Jack's background, this has been his background quite a few times on our show. Uh, this is a staple for us is our Jack green screen. Uh, but this was one of the first ones fine. he ever used. This is fine. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and a, it probably is, is most meme. used one. And that, so, and this is the, this is fine meme with the dog um, from it's 10 years old, turns 10 years old. And the guy who we were talking about for the show, I don't know. Stuart had a good question of, what are you going to give us to replace this? But he wants to retire the meme and, uh, and, and to pass and, and to move on to give his other characters some space and some, and some shine. Uh, I don't know any of his other characters though. So dude, you're a lot cuter than that dog. Thanks dude. I mean, I'm not sure. And your that, eyes though. are straight. I wish you had the little hat though. The little yeah, hat. totally. Um, but no, I, I think it's like kind of funny. Cause like, what, what is this guy? Have? I, I know he made the meme, but like, who is he get to say? He better have meme, a hot the one meme in the chamber, dies. dude. <laughs> memes die, dude. Like memes just are born and die. Like no, like the guy who made Pepe. You think he doesn't? Even, he hates what it's turned into. And now, like, do you think like he can just be like, oh, it's time to get rid of Pepe? I don't it's know. Like, Rick Astley is in a brand new commercial, so I think dude, not all of memes fucking die. Yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know. Oh, the well. dude, the artist that created it, his name is KC Green. And considering that if you go to his <laughs> KCGreen.com, at the very top is a <laughs> This Is Fine vinyl doll. <laughs> He's definitely leaning into it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. All and right. The new, the new doll retired. is dropping April 5th. So this is. Oh, new yeah, shit. dude. Get this off my screen, front office. Get this, this fake ass shit off he's my like, screen. This he's fucker like, tries to spell his name like he's in Casey in the Sunshine Band. What the fuck? Just spell it Casey yeah. like a normal person. Who who idiot. who I've seen at Ribfest. At Ribfest. I've seen a Ribfest and their backup dancer had a butt yep. that I will never forget about. <laughs> in the and, and, and the complete opposite way of the John Mayer butt. Jack 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 and I sat under the stage and watched it. Casey and the Sunshine Band. I was a boy Amazing. when I watched that show. At the end, I was a man. A full 100%. man. It, it's Casey Casey was still in a leather onesie at, <laughs> at age 109. <laughs> um, like little fat Elvis. It, it was bad. I shot at Rip Fest too. Those are other things that I wish I, I the my look, my Good times the golden <laughs> era of my life, which I didn't appreciate, and I wish I could have gone, I could go back and appreciate more because it's not here anymore. Is those years of just all of my friends working at Riverport, we were doing uh rib fests we were doing just all the stuff just working crazy hours working all the shows doing dumb shit you know working like late yeah, partying late working late you know i mean like i wish i could kind of go back now and do it with like what I, like the appreciation but it is what it is can't go back but uh like rib fest was so much fun i miss rib fest and cowboy mouth was another band that never really got super big but great live band they were one of the best live shows i've ever seen they always did the red spoons when yeah, they did the red Says. spoons from dairy queen everybody threw the dairy queen but and it was like one of the few band one of the few bands that has the drummers the singer um i guess the band would be another one right um the singer of the band is the drummer right yeah he is yeah um but there's there's very few that they had a song about joe strummer which is really cool uh but anyway uh, but to close off the show, uh, you know, we only got, what is it, an hour? God damn, we're already over an hour. Um, I guess we, we got to go over the playoff matchup. So let's yeah. let's shift our gear into sports real quick. Uh, we'll we'll kind of make this quick. Uh, we just had our wild card weekend. Um, I was wrong about knew. pretty much everything. Yeah, it was. So Jack had a rough go. <laughs> Stuart and I were, were, were above a water, and the front office killed it. Um, it all, all good games. So the only stinker of a game was, was Monday night, which I'm not, which is funny. Cause our, my buddy Adele, <laughs> we were talking Sunday night. We're like, damn, there has not been a bad game yet this week. Like no matter who you want to win or lose, every game has been a banger. It's yeah. been like, you yeah. know, Seattle and San Francisco was kind of, you know, not the best, best, but it was still, but it was still a good game. Uh, but Adele was like, man, now we got to watch Brady and Dallas. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, you're right. Like it, it is weird that like you usually you would think like you get excited about that matchup in the past, Dak Brady. I yeah. just didn't feel that great about it. I was like, whatever. I didn't, you know, it is what it is. And then you saw how the game was going for a short second. It looked like we might get a Brady type comeback. Uh, and then they missed the two pointer and you just fucking and then CeeDee Lamb scored and you just knew that was it. Dude. Um I mean, if you're the Cowboys though, you got your fucking you gotta figure out a kicking situation by his next playoff game that is the most so he was he was the first kicker ever to miss three kicks and a, a three extra points and then he ends up missing another one yeah. uh, a fourth one and i guess he made the fifth one that he had to kick so at least he he hit he ended up hitting one but um talk about the yeah. yips yeah so but that Apparently was they're that sticking was, with him That's yeah i, I think they probably well yeah i think they probably will he's been there a while and he's never had anything like this and it was three the whole season and yeah, then he missed four in the one game. Four in one game. Uh, did nuts. did we? Why'd you do we? Hold can on. we bring the bracket back? Oh, okay. back? Okay, I was just a little confused. Hey, hey. So not Puff only was rings. so he was he's the kicker who missed the most extra points in a single game, but he also did it all in the first half, uh, Which or like is the fucking first three. Crazy so it's Harley. definitely a record that's one. probably gonna stand forever. I would imagine. Uh, yeah, for sure. Why do we got I the mean, Giants twice? Uh, so the uh, NFC logo. Oh shit! I I caught that error that I'd made. Oh, before. I didn't catch. Oh, no, I see it. Oops. God, just deal damn, with it. Fuck you, dude. All right, so we actually so it's so for anybody out there watching, it, it so is it's not Eagles it's, versus. Yeah. So it's uh, Eagles. Gi- so it's Giants right. at Eagles Saturday yeah. night. Uh-huh. Okay. Because so and then the other one is San Francisco and 
who Dallas at San Francisco Niners Dallas yeah Dallas at San Francisco which is so, a classic rivalry classic rivalry so but back to the games like they happened this week so Philly already had the 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 first round by the biggest frauds in NFL the my, Minnesota Vikings lose to the Giants the Giants are looking scary Saquon is, is looks healthy Brian Dable has got the boys playing Brian Daniel Jones breaking first, records breaking Daniel record Jones. Daniel Jones first play, first guy to ever have what, what that many rushes rushing 200 yards, yards passing it's like, like 300 yards, yards rushing passing. 300 I know yards, they, 70 yards I know, rushing i know they don't consider like the postseason when they do their season long awards but i mean dable's got to be the coach of the year right 100 percent. that's my coach of the year for sure i mean from what that team was last year him coming in and not Doug I peterson mean, can be the other guy peterson uh, right dable. yeah I, I could i could be okay i could live with either of those but yeah um, i that, that was a good game. So I was think the other Dable's episode? more surprising, so I'd give it to him. I, he'd get the edge. I agree. Um, so we had Dolphins, Dolphins, uh, Bills, which uh, we all thought Tua not being there, this was going to be a wash. It kind of did get ugly in the second half. They kind of blew, but man, da, da, the Dolphins hung in there. Dude. They were up for a while. Um, Dude, Josh Allen looked bad. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, that, he did. This game, like he he yes, almost he lost this game to Skyler fucking Thompson. I, I think that needs to be like but underscored. Two interceptions, a fumble lost. Uh, I mean, he just did not look at Josh anything. Allen throws ugly fucking picks, dude. He led the the uh, league in interceptions, I believe, at um, one point. Yeah, I don't know if he finished, but I know he was leading the league in interceptions. But he. It was not. It was not a good performance. I mean, they, like I said, they turned it on the second half. Um, but I, I, if I'm the Bills and I'm Bills fans, after you just saw how the Bengals nervous. are playing, yeah, I would be a little bit nervous. Um, you couldn't. You can't. You couldn't put. You or basically, you struggled to put away your division rival when they didn't have their starting quarterback. <clears throat> yeah, and that and that's the exact same story as the next game, which is the Bengals Ravens. You, yeah, I guess really, you're right there too. Yeah. You struggled like fuck to beat your division opponent when they didn't even have their starting quarterback. So again, I don't know what to think of those two teams. They're playing each other, so it'll, it'll sort itself out, I guess. But is the AFC overrated now? It was like Josh came in third, by the way. Yeah, so Dak ended up. I mean, Dak you're gonna have tough games in the good. playoffs. I, Dak missed I, you know. games. Yeah, Dak was tied for it. Dak missed games. That's so funny. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, I know I'm with you. That's why I mean Tyler. So shout before we do it, say anything. Shout out to Tyler Huntley. Um, did everything he possibly could last night to win that game. I mean, or the other night to win that game. Uh, Lamar, you know, is you know, I, you know, he's kind of doing his thing. He's injured. He's sitting out. You know, I, you know, I'm I'm part of the crowd of like Lamar probably should just say fuck the Ravens and not play, especially if they're not going to pay you. You know, I mean, I wouldn't go out there and why go out there that. and RG three yourself for a team that doesn't fucking appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm with him on that. But I don't Tyler know about Huntley, the Huntley fucking ball over the goal line was ugly. Yeah. No. So here's the thing. He made some ugly mistakes in that game. Some game costing mistakes, like undoubtedly. Yeah. But for a, a a second string, more than like you know, third string guy who's coming off an injury himself yeah. to come in there in a playoff game, divisional in in uh, Cincinnati and to biggest game of his career, the biggest yeah, game of his career, and they almost win the game. You know, I mean, that's yeah. it's it's a, it's a hell of a game. So I mean, you know, all all the, the props to him. Yeah. Um. So and 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 before we get to this last one, so just to kind of recap. Uh, Stuart and I had I had the Giants, I believe, beating the Vikings. I had um, the Cowboys beating the Bucks, right? Uh, no, or did you I had Bucks. Bucks. You had the Bucks, Bucks beating Cowboys. I had yeah, Bills I had Bucks. beating. Okay, so I had Bills beating Dolphins. So Jack, which ones right. were you wrong on? You had Vikings. I was I was wrong on the Vikings. I was wrong on the Chargers. I was wrong on the Seahawks. Seahawks. Well, that was because I wanted Geno Smith yeah, to win. And the Vikings. Uh oh, you, a the Bucks. Bucks. In the bu- the Bucks. I took yeah. the Bucks. Okay. So so he was wrong. So this next one coming up was the game of the week, in my opinion. I thought it was the best game of the weekend. Um, I have a friend Great. who uh, who after the Rams left, they him and his group of friends uh, took their fandom to the Jaguars. He's also a Packers fan by heart, but he's a uh, big Jaguars fan. He has two friends of his that left Saturday night or Friday night because the game was Saturday night, right? So they they left Friday night, drove all the way to Jacksonville for this game. They're getting they're 
they're getting destroyed in the first half. I to the point where I texted my buddy and was like, "Boy, it's going to be a long drive home from Jacksonville." And he was like, "Good thing I didn't watch." <laughs> you know, he's like, "This is whatever." And then Trevor Lawrence and Dougie Peterson with the comeback for the ages. I mean, this was they're legit, and um, it, the, and the train Chargers might stop here. Charge. But the Chargers did the so same as the Vikings. So the I said earlier the Vikings are the biggest frauds. There's a one B in that conversation, and it's the it's the it's the Chargers. The boys have got everything. Well, Brandon Staley is an idiot. One because they're 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 missing their second best receiver because they plays him in a meaningless Week 18 game and he gets hurt. So you're missing Mike Williams. Um, he can't coach. He makes some of the dumbest decision i have ever seen in my he's the worst life. game manager next to andy reed sometimes it is some of the worst things <laughs> yeah dude i mean i don't want to talk even andy might have cleaned that up a little bit nowadays yeah, you got like better. thinking about Bro, early, I, it was like two years ago you guys Phillies. remember that yeah dude but i have like a twitch in my little philly brain every time i think about like when i think of mcnab rolling back in that super bowl <laughs> like just at the end of the game yeah um but but it's disgusting. But but the Jaguars come back. They beat them. Brandon Staley. Apparently they're going to stick with him. Everybody thought he'd be fired this week, and then he was going to be a candidate for the d- defensive coordinator spot for the Browns. Which get out of here. Nobody <laughs> wanted him because we just watched him blow that game. I don't want him anywhere near my team. That defense side note, is pretty good though. Side note: the Browns signed Jim Schwartz today as their defensive coordinator. Shout uh, shout out. He was my second guy. I wish we got Brian Flores, but I love Jim Schwartz. I think Miles Garrett might have 35 sacks next year. Um, <laughs> uh, but back to this. Moving on, we got Jaguars. So now we got Jaguars, Kansas City, Bengals. This is gonna Bills. be a good game. Yeah, so I think so too. I really, yeah. really think this is gonna be closer than I think they lose this game. So let's go ahead and uh pick these games real quick so in the second round we've got new york at at philly who had the first round by dallas at san francisco who uh so nobody had a buy there uh jacksonville kansas city kansas city had the buy as the one seed and now we got Bengals at bills so let's go ahead and um so and let's we did a super bowl thing too we haven't we we sometime this week we'll get a clip up of beginning of the year stewart stayed the same his super bowl pick just got beat last night so yes rest in peace to that but so jack and i's original super bowl pick and well jack's second super bowl pick the vikings he changed his to bills vikings last week vikings are out but his our og san francisco bills are still in and my secondary of bills and eagles are still in so um i'm looking good on super bowl picks we'll see what happens um but let's get into these so going first who wants to go who wants to go first on let's start afc this week we did nfc last week so let's start afc Let's do Bills. I I think the Chiefs just overpower the offense of the Jaguars. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear what you said. No, you're good. Let's do – we're going to do Jaguars-Chiefs first. Okay. So, I just think the offense is too much. I've seen this Jaguars team in Week 18 versus the Titans. You know, they couldn't even get their motor going on offense. They relied on defensive score to win it. Now, they came back in this game. You know, they showed more offensive prowess, I guess. You could – I mean – you have to give credit where credit's due, but I just I think Kansas City is just too much for them. Okay, Stu. Uh, Chiefs are a very very good team. Is he going to keep say, it up? Is I'm he going to do say, it? I'm not going to say uh, they're great. But they're very very good, and the fact and Jarek McKinnon as of late has added a whole new dimension to this uh, offense. I can't believe it. I can't believe that's a thing. Yeah, Jerry, ninth year running back. He's like the fucking X factor now. Unreal. But so added a whole new dimension to this offense. They, they, and, they're, and they're rolling. The problem is, is that this is an offense that's all about uh, rhythm and and momentum. They've had an off week. They've had a, a, a buy. They've you know had that first round buy. They might come out a little slow. I'm gonna stick with my boy Dougie P. And I'm gonna say the Jaguars sneak out with an upset win. Let's go. Jaguars Let's go. in the AFC championship. Wow. Yeah, Trevor I'm, Lawrence in the AFC championship. I like I'm, it. I'm calling it, dude. I because I've been so high on them and they've done me proud. I gotta, you gotta stick roll with it. it. You gotta roll with it. It's a hot hand, um, man. So as much as I respect the pick, yeah. I am so I'm in the middle though. So I don't think that they're gonna over okay. I don't know if they're gonna just straight up overpower them. 
but I do think that this is where the, I said this last week, I thought this is where the magic stops. So I, who, what, what do I know? But I think that this week, I think the chiefs are a little too much. I think Andy, look, you got to remember that Dougie, P, Dougie Peterson is a, is coming from the Andy Reed tree. And I think that most times you see the, 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 you know, the mentor against the, 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 the student, yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think Andy Reid's just going to outsmart him. I think he's just going to maybe out coach him. Not saying I'm not even saying he's a better coach. I just think that experience is going to play here, and I think that uh, the rest is going to be good. I think Kansas City, the rest, that's one of those teams that uh, a bye week isn't going to just throw like out of whack. Like they've been here, they've done this. They're the big daddy. I think that like they they use the rest to their advantage. So I think yeah. that I think Kansas City be checked in a close game though. I think it's within a touchdown. Like I don't think it's any more than. <laughs> A seven point loss. All right. So, all right. So let's go. Bang. Chiefs. Yeah. So two Chiefs. Yeah. We also at the end of this got to get our front office Super Bowl pick because we never got that. But we'll get that at the end. I'm gonna go yeah. Chiefs too. Just, uh, just to keep it consistent. I okay. Love it. Unfortunately, Andy Reid is three zero against his disciples in the playoffs. Um, Buck and here. there's a. There's a, a lot of bright lights out there. Kansas City's been doing this for years. They know what they're getting themselves into. Um, I I hope the Jags win. Don't don't hear me Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah like I, I will be rooting for the Jaguars a hundred percent. But uh, yeah, gotta pick what, what you think. You know, I might actually get a Calvin Ridley shirt next year. Like I might like that'd be sick. I I, be I I'm excited to see this team with Calvin Ridley. Another Sincerely. dimension to that offense, man. Let's spread that open shit up. Yeah, I agree. Who are you going to double cover? Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of people in there. You got Travis. All right, so, so, Sorry, Bengals so let's at, go Bengals-Bills. Bengals at Bills, my thought behind this is that the NFL doesn't want to relocate this game to Atlanta. Yeah. And that the, fi- and that the fix is in. I think the Bengals take this one, especially after how the Bills looked last week. Yeah. So is this game's going to be in Buffalo. Yep, in Buffalo. Okay. But if it goes to the AFC championship, if the AFC championship is Buffalo, Kansas City, they're going to play that game in Atlanta. Yeah, interesting. I and I don't okay. think the NFL wants to do that. So I think the fix is in. I think Joey B's got his second AFC championship game to play in. Okay. And wouldn't that be fucking incredible if the Jags do win? with Trevor Lawrence versus Joe Burrow, that would be so sick. Else. Oh, that would be something else. So but, I'm, I'm with, I'm with you on that. I think, I, I, I think the Bengals beat him regardless. I, I think, um, yeah. I think Joey B is going to be, he's going to break that stat of, you know, like first year quarter or second, whatever the, that stat was of them returning to the Super Bowl after they lose or whatever. Um, I think he's going to go back to the Super Bowl. I don't know if it's this year. Like, I got, I'm not saying that there, cause I still think that, uh, I know I said my my Super Bowl like damn my Super Bowl pick is is Philly Bills but you know I guess if I'm wrong here then it's good for my Super Bowl pick but the way That's I saw how I looked people, at it <laughs> the way I the way yeah the way I'm I'm feeling I really think that the Bengals have got this I think they're just Joey B is on fire like he he is so good through the air and like there's just never any like there's just so much like Machado there. There's so much like fucking balls in, in that guy. Like where no matter how poor a game might going, he's going to throw the ball. He's going to keep throwing the ball and he's going to put up some numbers. He's going to find his guys. Jamar chase is playing out of his mind. So I, I think, uh, Buffalo, or I think the bills lose this game. So going off of the recent games and most specifically last this past week of football bills, <clears throat> a lot of turnovers, just bad opportunities afoot. I'm going to go ahead, and if they were my preseason Super Bowl pick. I'm going to use the term fakes. They've fooled us all. They're a bunch of fakes, and nobody has taken better advantage of turnovers than the Bengals. I thought you said Bang- the Bengals are going to wipe the fucking floor. Interesting. Bro, that, that, that touchdown that they scored, that defensive touchdown was so sick. Who is that, that Sam deep, Hubbard? That linebacker core and that front four, they're going to fucking eat. The Bills are fakes. I was I fooled. We've Look all been that. fooled. They're fucking done. Damn. Get him, Stu. Get him, Stu. So, what's front office? What's front office? Oh. You going to join the, the crew or are you going to be the lone wolf? 
Dude, I, I gotta be honest with you. I absolutely hate picking games like this because of how much emotion there is. At all the rest of these three matchups, I You're feel the only like one I can is crying, see clearly. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. But seriously, all the eyes are gonna be on this game. This is yeah. gonna be prime time like you've never seen before. We thought the prime time game was in week 17 between these two teams. No. Th- this is literally I can't even imagine the eyeballs. The whole world is probably going to be watching this game. Cowboys Niners too. Let's not. Uh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. That's, that's classic, baby. That's, that's yeah. going to be classic. I can't wait to, to cover that one. Um, I have to agree with you guys, though. I, I really do. I, I wish I could go with the, with, with Josh, but Damn, it was so cl- bad last week. Sweet for the Bengals. Yeah, we've dude. burned clean on the Bills. The you can't. We you have can't stop Joe. One eighty turn on the, yeah, the Buffalo Bills. We have Joey no Jamar. Joey Jamar. That's that's a connection for the next ten years, hopefully. And mix. Yeah. All, right. All right, we're circling the wagons on the Buffalo Bills. That's right. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna so the, we'll we'll end on uh, we'll end on the classic. So let, let's go right. new. So we got an interdivision. So this is a big one too. I mean, this is a, a division is rival. Cool. In, in in especially with the Giants coming back, like the Eagles are on fire, like this is what, but but the Giants are hot. <coughs> this is this is going to be hot, nice, and, and we get the primetime Saturday matchup. Yep. Uh, Cowboys at Eagles or uh, Giants at Eagles, and this is going to be so fire. I cannot wait for this game. I think we need to put in perspective. I think we need to put in perspective, like who at the beginning of the season would have ever thought that these two teams would be playing each other in the fucking playoffs. You know what I mean? Uh, well, not only that, that the whole NFC East is in the playoffs and then, and the, the commanders were close. So it's like, yeah, it's, right. it's, not, it's not like they're, they I were thought far they were out. Be like the worst division in football this year. And they I were, think the, we all picked were, that to be honest with you. I think it yeah, was. probably, and they, and they were the, and they were the best. Like they were, they, they By it's far. amazing by far. Yeah. I mean, that it's yeah, amazing it's how close. good that they were. So, uh, so Giants Eagles, um, Giants are hot. Like I said, we just talked about it. They had a great. Everybody played great in that game the other day. Kayvon Thibodeau is a, uh, is wrecking cr- shop on defense Man. right now. I don't know if you guys saw him gritty on the Viking, but that was fire. Yeah. Um, love that. Um, but I, I, you know who I'm going with here. I think Jalen Hurts. I think yeah. the boys are they're a number one seed for a reason. I think Jalen Hurts is only getting healthier with this time off. I think his first game back there was a little rust, a little injury still. He still got the win. Uh, so I, I, but I think this is, I think it's going to be close. I don't think it's going to, I think it's going to be, you know, I, I'm going to say 28, 21 is going to be this, the final of this game, but I, I think the Eagles pull this off and go to the NFC championship, baby. Stu. <laughs> um, look, no disrespect to the giants. I mean, somehow they got together a nine and seven record and it just being scrappy and being surprising again, head coach of the year. For sure, but uh, Eagles, I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna light it up. To be honest with you, it, Jalen Hurts is feeling good. Um, he's had a week to get healthy, and he's crucial to this offense. It, it's just not clicking as if Jalen Hurts is not there. He's there. He had an extra week to MVP. heal up. I think you're gonna see that connection between him and uh, AJ Brown. They're gonna go yard a couple times. And I think the Eagles will take care of them handedly. I think the running attack I love the Eagles you. is just too much for the Giants. Well, I mean, whether it's I love the, pat, you too. the catch and run <laughs> from AJ or Miles Sanders and Jalen running out of the backfield. West help. Coast offense like a motherfucker. Yeah, I just Dude, and Devontae Smith, Devontae Smith and AJ Brown are such a savage duo, by the way. Like they're sure. just so they because you have you have the speed, well. you have the speed receiver, and then you have AJ, who's also a speed receiver, but he can fucking fight anybody on the field. Yeah, for the he's ball. like a tank, <laughs> yeah. literally. I, I remember when when he was on the Titans, there would be so many plays where Tannehill would just throw it up. And when I say it was a 50-50 ball, that's probably generous. Like It was probably like a 30-70 to the defender, and AJ just rips it out of his hands every single time. It, it's awesome to watch, but... Um, okay, man. Eagles. What do you what do you what do you got? Uh, are we going for a full clean sweep there, front office. Yeah. What do you say? Yeah, this is so boring. We're all dipping the same things, but this Eagles, is obvious, dude. Seriously, all right. This is, it's all right. You know, D- Danny Dimes. You've done wonders this year. I think they should re-sign him. To be honest with you, I, I think, think they um, will. There's no better I, choice. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like a, uh, I think he's proven it that he gets he gets a prove it deal this year. Dude, uh, what if Carson Wentz? <sighs> 
you know, keep circling the NFC East. Just gets dealt. <laughs> next year's next year's is giant year. <laughs> yeah. Shit. No, That's but fucking uh, awesome. Yeah. Bro, okay. So the One last more. matchup is I'll let Stu take this away because it's his it's his team, the Cowboys. So Stu, what what do you what do you what do you say about this matchup? <laughs> ah, ah. Um, I mean, Dak leads the or is tied for the lead in the league with uh, interceptions. That secondary. On he's played like Niners, five games, and he, and yet he still <laughs> is tied for first league in interceptions. He does not look fucking good. That secondary on the Niners is mean. My boy Hafanga is a ball hawk. Uh, he's also good at stuff in the run. So Pollard, Zeke, sit the fuck down. I think the Niners are going to. It's going to be ugly, and the Niners are going to come out of that looking very good and a lot of momentum going to that NFC championship. And I, it, good luck to whoever has to face them in the next fucking round. Agreed. I think that if there's going to be a blowout this this week, I don't know if it's going to be a blowout, but I think that San Francisco is just the better team. I think Joey Bosa is going to wreck shop. I think. Uh, I think I just think that the Cowboys. Nick Bosa. Are, Nick we're talking Bosa's about Bosa's gonna uh, say Joey Bosa. Nick. I meant Nick yeah. Bosa. Um, yeah. yeah, Nick Bosa is gonna eat. Uh, if, if we're gonna be throwing around the Faker name here, I think it's the Cowboys are the Fakers. I just think I just don't look. I mean, they looked good the other the last night. I mean, they uh, Monday night they looked really good, but I think that the the Bucks were sinking as it is. I think they were just kind of. I mean, did they just look like they didn't even want to be in that game? Almost like it was just like it was so sad. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I think San Francisco. I mean, I, you know, I, I picked. Thankfully, I picked them. It was my beginning of the year Super Bowl pick, and I've got the Eagles. But if any team scares me, it's Sam. Out of for anybody, I think San Francisco is terrifying. I think Brock Purdy is a great game manager who is turning into a star. I mean, and they've they've just got everything. Debo is is, is firing on all cylinders. Ayuk is. The, I mean, Ayuk is a man. I mean, that, and he's their leading receiver. People don't talk about that enough. Um, and then you got, uh, he, CMC, stays healthy. he stays healthy. Uh, George Kittle was a nobody again this year until Brock Purdy has like, I mean, him and Brock Purdy have got like the connection. Yeah. And then, and then CMC was the missing piece. So I, I think they destroy the Cowboys. Uh, you know, I will say a blowout. I think we'll I think talk about how win. bad that Dallas Cowboys run defensive has been as late. Christian McCaffrey is going to have a good, Good fucking game. San Francisco by two scores. Okay. So, yeah. so if, if Brock Purdy comes out, beats the Cowboys, and he's on his way to an NFC championship, you guys might as well call Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga because a star is born, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that, I mean, coming from being Mr. Irrelevant to this story, what this year's been, I mean, that I, I got to say, man, I've never been a 49ers fan, but I, I'll be honest, man, I'm rooting for this kid. I'm rooting for this team. They're fun it's to watch. Fun I've always team. liked Debo Samuel. Um, so, yeah, no, I going with what you guys were saying, and I hate my favorite team in the Cow, uh, my favorite team in the NFL is whoever's playing the Cowboys that week. So <laughs> um, it's pretty much a, a given that I'm going with the Niners, plus they're my Super Bowl pick. But, yeah, I uh, I could I could see where Stu's saying you know mm, maybe it's a blowout, but um, I think the only chance it's not is if Dak has a one of his classic I'm on games, and that could happen. I mean, it's not outside the realm of possibilities, but it's just something we haven't really seen a lot, especially really? post post injury last year. Really, I think that la- that injury last year I haven't really seen 100 percent full Dak like he was prior to that. So. Yeah, Niners. Front office, what do you got? Yep, sweep. Get out the broom, baby. Bay Area. A, dude, so, so we're only San on the Fran Kansas City defense. and Jags are the only are the only yeah. game we're all toss up on. Because Stu had the balls to take the Jags. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> Fucking the Doug P balls. Dude. Bay Area. How do you score against San Fran? Like, seriously. Not a lot. Uh, <laughs> if you just look at the di- the defense, it's so stacked. I mean, we I talk mean, about the offensive weapons all you want, but think about in the I mean, if we get Niners Eagles next round, I mean that's fucked. I say dude. Philly's Philly's going to show us how to score on. I will say one thing: if I, I will regret that I don't say this, Geno Smith dropped an absolute fucking dime on DK Metcalf's head in that game over Ward, and that was beautiful. That's the only about- way. That's the only way. That's the only way Dak can beat San Francisco is if he can just throw. Geno Smith, right where your guy can get it. Yeah, shouts out to Geno. What a year! 
Um, yeah. All right. Well, cool. Well, uh, that's so. Yeah. So then next week we'll we'll see what happens this weekend, and then we'll be back next week to we'll get an AFC Championship next week and AFC and NFC Championship game, and Wait. we'll uh, we'll keep track and we'll see how our picks go. But other than that, uh, I think that's it. Uh, this has been Pop Culture Rehab. Um, make sure you guys like our stuff, thumb up our YouTube videos, like our content. We're boosting our posts, follow us on everything. What is that? When I die, I may go to heaven. I don't know if they, if they like how it was in. <laughs> I may not go. I may not go to heaven. But, uh, yeah, make sure you like and follow our show everywhere. Thumb up the YouTube videos or thumb down the YouTube videos. Whatever. Or thumb up my ass, whatever. Yeah. Just give and me more something. than that. And more than that, give us a share, man. Share us with a friend. Give us a shirt. We're brewing up some stuff, just so you know. We have got some good stuff coming to your coming your guys' direction. So 2023 is going to be good. Uh, make sure you. Um, oh yeah. Also, vote in the Cavs. The NBA uh, NBA All Star voting is is open. It's coming up here in February. Vote them in. Vote in the Fro. Damn vote right. in Darius. Vote in or don't Spider uh, Mitchell. No, Donovan's a lot. Do Di- vote, vote in Donovan Mitchell. Don't Spidey. vote in the. Don't vote in the Utah Jazz. So you guys have a good night. We will talk to you <laughs> Mark, guys later. Vote, vote Markinen. Yeah, you can vote in Laurie Markinen. He's a cat legend. Uh, but other than that, happy <laughs> birthday to Jack, 30, 30th birthday. He's only getting Never cuter with age. Uh, he wasn't supposed to be here today, Stop. so it's an awesome surprise that he made time for us today uh, Get you know for you guys. So if any other reason you don't need a live show, it's because Jack spent his birthday with you. So 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see you guys later. You guys have a good one. We'll see you next week. Kiss. <laughs>